The purpose of this tutorial is going to be twofold. One, it's meant to serve as a primer slash refresher course for spiking measurements in general. And two, it's going to show how to use the Radon Report Manager software in order to create spiking measurements. A good portion of this video may be showing you stuff that you already know. So if you'd like to skip ahead to the end of the video, there's a fairly long segment devoted to frequently asked questions that may address exactly what you're looking for. Also, I'm going to be narrating almost word for word the slides that appear on the screen. Boring, I know. But I don't really want the narration to detract from the visual information appearing on the screen. I will occasionally add my own quips or asides about a given topic, but for the most part, you can mute the audio on this tutorial video and still take away 95% of what you need to know. So let's begin. What is spiking? Spiking is a quality assurance, quality control procedure designed to ensure the accuracy of your radon measurements when using passive detectors. During spiking, your detectors are exposed to a known radon concentration. This known radon concentration is called the target value. At Radilec, we perform blind spiking, so you won't know the target radon concentration until after you've analyzed the detectors. The accuracy and bias of your analysis will be determined when compared against this target radon concentration. For example, if your analysis says that the radon concentration is 50 picocuries per liter, but we know that the concentration of the radon chamber is only 20 picocuries per liter, then it's clear that there's a problem with your results that needs to be resolved. In short, the purpose of spiking is to ensure that you're calculating proper results whenever you do a radon test. So, do you have to spike? Both the NRPP and NRSB require that listed companies or individuals perform spiking measurements through an accredited radon chamber. Certain states also require that radon measurement professionals perform spiking. Having said this, there is no national, federal, or otherwise all-encompassing statute that says that you must perform spiking tests. Nevertheless, most radon measurement professionals are either NRPP or NRSB listed, and this is required by many states. And even if your state doesn't require NRPP or NRSB certification and doesn't have any spiking requirements, it's still a good idea to at least consider performing one. You should send in three detectors for spiking for every 100 radon detectors that you deploy, with a minimum of three per year and a maximum of six per month. As a general rule, 3% of your deployed detectors should be spiking measurements. To err on the side of caution, round up. To help keep you sorted, the radon report manager will remind you when it's time to send in detectors for a spiking test. It is important to remember that this spiking requirement is not exclusive of your other QAQC obligations. In the 100 detectors displayed, 3 should be spikes, 5 should be blanks, and at least 10 should be duplicates. Let's move onward to the specific procedures for spiking. The first step is to pick out the electrets and their respective chambers to send in to Radilec. While you're doing this, Inspect the surface of each electret to make sure that it's clean. If not, clean it off with nitrogen. Also, inspect the chambers that you're going to use, make sure that they're in the off position, and that any filters in those chambers are in good condition. The second step is to read the electrets and record the initial voltages on the spiking service form. You can use the Radon Report Manager for this step, or you can download the spiking service form directly from Radilex website. Step three is to load the electrets into their chambers, ensure that they are properly closed, and then mail them back to Radilex along with the completed spiking service form. If you are including a shipping blank that is not going to be exposed in the radon chamber, then please label it clearly. Once we receive your electrets at the office, we will expose them in Radilex radon chamber. We perform spiking twice per week, beginning on Monday and Wednesday afternoons. Each of our spiking exposures lasts for 48 hours. As soon as we remove your electrets from the radon chamber, they will be mailed back to you. And this takes us to step four. After you receive your electrets back, calculate their results. Again, you can use the Radon Report Manager for this step. After you've calculated their results, Send them back to us on your spiking service form. 
This is usually done via email or fax. The fifth step is when Radelec compares your results against the known target radon concentration in our chamber. We will email you a spiking report so that you can see how accurate your results are when compared to the known concentration of the radon chamber. If one or more of your detectors has exceeded the control limit, which is usually greater than 25 relative percent error, then Radelec will offer you a free retest. The next portion of this tutorial will be focused on taking an in-depth look at each of these five steps, the first of which should be pretty self-explanatory, so I won't waste any more time on step one, and instead shoot right to step two where we'll launch the Radon Report Manager and use it to create a spiking record. From the main menu, let's click on Test Data and then click on the New Record with New Customer button from within the Test Assistant. We're going to assume that this is the first time that a spiking test has been created in the database, so I'm going to enter in a fictitious company name in the customer window. The purpose of doing this is that so you can specifically track all QA, QC related records by looking up your own company name. An alternative to this would be simply to type in your name and then QA, QC, or even spiking as the company. Basically, use your own preference and common sense to type in whatever information you want as your customer, as long as you can remember that this will be the identifier to track down all spiking related records in your database. After clicking on the Save and Close button in the Customer Record window, we're looking at a blank new record with our company as the customer. Now let's click on the drop down for Protocol and select Spiking. By default, an option is set to automatically add all of Radilex information to the test site location, including the elevation and gamma. We can set our mode to initial, which will make it easier to tab through the data fields, and then begin entering in our Electret serial numbers and voltages. For this tutorial, I'm going to type in four Electrets, although the last one will be a shipping blank. While I'm doing this, it's worth double checking your elevation and gamma values, just to be safe. When using Radilex Radon Chamber, the elevation should be set to 300 feet and the background gamma should be set to MV, which stands for measured value, and then set to 8.0 micro R per hour. If you're using SI units, the elevation should be set to 91 meters and 69.6 .6 nanograys per hour background gamma. After we've finished entering in our detectors in field blank, let's print out a deployment sheet that we'll include along with the detectors to be mailed to Radilec. This is going to be our spiking service form. Then we can save the record, close it, and exit out of the Radon Report Manager. If you don't have the software, that's perfectly fine. You can head to Radilec's website and print out either a PDF or download a Word document of the spiking service form. There are links located in the description of this video and in the Frequently Asked Questions segment near the end. And now it's time to mail the detectors. Do one last quick check to make sure that they're all closed and that any shipping blanks you're sending are properly labeled. And then carefully pack them into a box along with some padding such as newspaper or bubble wrap and definitely remember to include a copy of the spiking service form. We'll need this in order to write down the dates and times of the exposure. Mail it to our office using any postal carrier that you prefer to the address displayed here. Our office's address is also provided on the first page of the spiking service form. Let's quickly recap what we've done so far. The first step is pretty self-explanatory. Pick the detectors and chambers that you wish to use and make sure that they're clean. We've also gone over the second step and shown how to record the initial voltages from within the Radon Report Manager. And we've pretty much finished discussing the third step, where we've loaded the electrets into their respective chambers and mailed them off to Radilec. At this point, it's a waiting game. We will expose your electrets in our chamber after we receive them. We perform spiking twice a week, on Mondays and Wednesdays. These exposures will last a total of 48 hours, and then we'll mail you your EPERMs back. After you receive them, it's time to read their final voltages and calculate the results. In this tutorial, we'll again be using the Radon Report Manager in order to analyze our detectors.
Okay, let's load up our spiking record. From the main menu, we'll click on the Test Data button. When the Test Assistant opens, we'll select our spiking record from the list and then click on the Load Record button. Now our spiking record is loaded, but it's also currently locked. So let's unlock it and then begin to enter in the dates and times that were written on our spiking service form. We can use the Fill Down button to expedite this process so that we don't need to type in the dates for each detector. Note that the dates and times of the exposure will be located near the bottom left-hand corner of the spiking service form that you received back in the mail from Rattelec. You can either type in the dates and times using the keyboard, or you can click on the calendar or clock buttons, whichever you'd prefer, in either a 12 or 24 hour format. After we finished entering in our exposure dates, we can begin to fill in the final voltages. In order to do this, you're going to need to read the electrets using your own SPUR1 voltage reader, the same one that you used to read their initial voltages. Read them three times each, ensuring that you get the same voltage with each pull. If you're oscillating between two numbers, like between 515 and 516, keep reading until you get three identical numbers in a row. You'll notice that as we enter in each final voltage, the radon concentration for the corresponding electret is being calculated. Well, except for the shipping blank, which was hopefully labeled properly and not inadvertently exposed to the radon chamber. After we finish entering in all of our final voltages, let's create a PDF of the spiking service form. Make sure that the report type is set to deployment and then click on the PDF button. Alternatively, you can print out a new spiking service form if you intend to fax or mail your results to Rattelec. After saving our record, let's exit out of the program. Now that we're finished, our completed spiking service form should look something like this. Our next step is going to be to send this form back to Rattelec so that the office can compare our results with the known radon concentration of the chamber. You can email, fax, or snail mail us the completed spiking service form. Although, if you'd like the results as quickly as possible, I'd recommend sticking with one of the first two options. This type of spiking service is called blind spiking, which means that you will not find out the known radon concentration of our chamber until after you send us the completed spiking service form. Once you do, we'll compare your results with the target radon concentration and send you a finalized two-page spiking service report which will look something like this. On the first page, you'll notice the target radon concentration in the second column from the right, and the relative percent error in the rightmost column. The RPE will show you how far your individual radon concentrations have strayed from the known value. And the second page is a graph that simply provides you with a visual representation of your RPE. Once you receive this finalized spiking report from Radelec, the only remaining task that needs to be tackled is to add this target radon concentration to your spiking record from within the Radon Report Manager. So let's do that now. From the main menu, click on the Test Data button and let's load up our spiking record one final time. As is always the case when loading a record, we will need to unlock it if we wish to edit it. And then we can click on the Target Fill button and enter in the target radon concentration that was displayed on the first page of the spiking service report. In this example, the radon concentration is 12.8 picocuries per liter. After typing in the target, click on the fill button to transfer this value to all relevant detectors in the record. And now we're pretty much finished. I am going to create a PDF of the letter report which is the equivalent of the graph on the second page of the spiking service report, but this is ultimately unnecessary. You can save the record and then exit out of the software. This may seem like a superfluous step, but the Radon Report Manager will view this spiking record as incomplete until the target radon concentration is filled. This means that it won't register any of these detectors as completed spikes until after you enter in the target radon concentration and generate an RPE. The following graph is the letter report from our spiking record in the Radon Report Manager. Although it's not identical to the official one you received from Radelec, it still conveys the same information. If you wish to supplement this further, you can print out a lab report to go alongside it. 
the data on both of these reports pretty much repeats the information that's on the official spiking service report from Radilac, but it's always good to know that you have a digital backup of your spiking test. We haven't really discussed the accuracy and bias of the results yet, so I think it's worth spending a few moments talking about the RPE, or relative percent error. Ideally, you will want all of your detectors to be as close to a zero RPE as possible. After all, a zero RPE indicates that your analysis perfectly matches the target rate on concentration in the chamber. From a more practical standpoint, though, anything below 10% RPE is great. This is considered completely in control. On the other hand, the control limit is the RPE boundary, the point at which your measured concentration has strayed quite far from the target rate on concentration. This control limit is normally 25%, although in Pennsylvania it's slightly pushed up to 30%. If you exceed the control limit on one or more of your detectors, it doesn't mean that you failed the spiking test. In fact, your spiking detector still counts towards your 3% spiking obligation regardless of its RPE value. However, you should definitely review your analysis to try and figure out what went wrong. If your error is greater than 25 or 30% from a known value, the same could easily be happening on all radon tests that you're performing. And that pretty much brings us to the end of the spiking procedures. At this point, we've discussed the final two steps. After you receive your detectors back from the chamber, you'll need to calculate their results and then send your completed spiking service form with the radon concentrations back to Radilac. You can use the Radon Report Manager software for this, or you can calculate them on your own. If you do the latter, make sure that your gamma and elevation are set to the values defined by the radon chamber. The fifth and final step pretty much just involves receiving your final spiking service report from Radilac, entering the target radon concentration into the software, and taking a look at your relative percent errors. And that pretty much wraps up the five main steps of the spiking process, which now brings us to the final segment of this video. In this section, we'll be going over some of the most frequently asked questions. And even if you followed along and understood everything that's been going on, it's probably still worth sticking around for the final portion of this tutorial. So let's start with the first of the frequently asked questions. One or more of my detectors failed a spiking test. What do I do? First off, don't worry. There's really no such thing as failing a spiking test. And it's not even mandatory to repeat the spiking test, since you're only required to perform spiking measurements and investigate your results. However, you should investigate the reasons as to why your detector fell outside of the control limit. When using EPERMS, the most common cause of error is accidentally touching the electrode surface during the initial or final voltage readings. Also, the presence of fine particulate, such as fibers or dust, on the electrode surface can greatly contribute to errors in analysis. Also, it's a good idea to check the filter on your chamber to make sure that it hasn't dislodged itself or become loose. If this has happened, your filter is probably bouncing around inside the chamber during shipping, and this can easily distribute some fine particulate onto the surface of the electret. For those detectors that have exceeded the control limit, Radilac will allow you to repeat the spiking test at no cost, except for shipping, provided that you mail the detector back to us within a month. If you decide to do this, please remember to write repeat at the top of your spiking service form. Another question that we commonly hear is where can I find the spiking service form? If you're using a current version of the Radon Report Manager software, then the spiking service form is automatically created whenever you select deployment as the report type on a spiking test record. If you're not using the Radon Report Manager, then the spiking service form can be found on Radilac's website at the following addresses, both as a PDF and as a Microsoft Word document. We've also included links to both of these formats in the description of this video, so you'll be able to download them with pretty much a single click. Okay, next up is, do I need to include a shipping blank with my spiking test? The answer is no, but it is a good idea, and we do recommend it. 
During shipping, your detectors may be exposed to x-rays and rough handling. If you include a shipping blank, it'll be much easier to explain a constant bias in your results due to factors that are outside of your control. Radilec does not expose your shipping blank to the radon chamber, so it shouldn't lose much, if any, voltage, and there's no charge associated with sending one. And now let's pivot the question slightly. If you do decide to include a shipping blank, how should it be done? First, load the shipping blank into the same type of chamber that you're using for the spiking test, and make sure that you've read its initial voltage. When packing your detectors to send to the office, label it clearly as a blank. Also, make sure that this blank is identified as such on your spiking service form. As to how you decide to label your blank, it's up to you. You can place the detector in a bag, and be sure to write blank on the bag itself. Or you can write blank on a piece of masking tape, or even duct tape, and adhere it to the side of the chamber. Basically, just use common sense. Once we receive your spiking detectors, we'll need to be able to identify your shipping blank. Large, clearly written labels work best, and should guarantee that your blank won't accidentally end up in our radon chamber alongside your other detectors. Next up is one of the most common errors that we run across. What background gamma and elevation values should I be using? The answer is straightforward. Always use the elevation and gamma values of the exposure location. Do not select the elevation and gamma based on where you analyze the detectors. This rule applies to all radon tests, not just for spiking. For example, if you read your electrets on top of a mountain somewhere, but deploy them in a valley, then you must use the elevation and background gamma of that valley. So, if you're using Radilex radon chamber for a spiking test, our elevation is 300 feet and the background gamma is 8.0 micro R per hour. In SI units, these values are 91 meters and 69.6 nanograys per hour, respectively. By default, the Radon Report Manager will automatically set the correct elevation and gamma values for Radilex Radon Chamber, but this option can be disabled. Although we've gone over this next question previously, it can be a bit ambiguous, so we'll take a closer look at it. How often should I perform a spiking test? As a general rule, at least 3% of your deployed detectors in any given year should be spikes. This rule does come with a few caveats, though. Even if you're deploying less than 100 radon detectors in a given year, you should still send in a minimum of three detectors for a spiking test. On the other hand, if you deploy more than 200 detectors in a given month, you need only send in six detectors for a spiking test, for that month only. 3% of 200 is six. You can spread your spiking obligations evenly throughout the year, or group them together and send them all in at once. And it is okay to anticipate ahead. This can be a bit confusing, so a few examples illustrating these rules would be worthwhile. In this calendar, we'll mark down the total number of radon detectors that we deploy each month throughout a given year. Then, at the end of that year, we'll total up all of the detectors that we deployed and arrive at a value of 288. In order to arrive at the number of spikes needed, we'll multiply that total by 0.03, which is essentially multiplying the total by 3%. Whatever our product is, we'll need to round it up to the nearest whole number. In this example, 8.64 will become 9. Even if it were 8.01 though, we would still need to round it up to 9. So, in this example, 9 is the total number of spikes that we would need to deploy throughout the year. We'll make this next example a bit more ridiculous in order to illustrate one of the caveats with spiking obligations. All in all, this example shows a pretty lousy year in radon tests, apart from June, where we have over 5,300 detectors deployed. Like in our previous example, 
let's add all of these together in order to get a yearly total, which turns out to be 5,361. Like before, let's multiply this number by 0 0.03 to arrive at our 3%, which turns out to be 160.83, and then round that number up to 161. This represents the nearest whole number value over 3% of 5,361, which should be the number of spikes we need to perform, right? Not quite. Remember that we have a rule that states we only need to perform a maximum of six spikes each month, which is 3% of 200. This means that if we ever deploy more than 200 detectors in a given month, we reduce that number back down to 200 and then keep tallying up our total. In this example, reducing 5,339 to 200 changes our total down to 222. 3% of that is 6.66, which rounds up to 7. Therefore, 7, and not 161, is our proper annual spiking obligation for this year. Here's a quick question that we sometimes get asked. Is Rattlex Radon Chamber accredited? The answer is yes. It is NRSB accredited as a tertiary chamber. Its accreditation ID is TRC6002. Another quick one, this time with an evasive answer. How much does the spiking service cost? Current pricing can be found on the first page of the spiking service form. Next question. Can I use another Radon Chamber for my spiking test? Of course, just be sure to use the elevation and gamma values that that chamber provides. If you're using the Radon Report Manager, click on Setup and then disable the option to use Rattelec as the default chamber. This will prevent Rattelec's information from appearing on the test record whenever you select the spiking protocol. Moving onward, can I mail Electrets in their keeper caps for spiking? The answer is no. Apart from opening your chamber in order to begin the exposure, Radelec cannot otherwise handle, change, or alter your detectors in any way. Besides, this sort of defeats the purpose of spiking, which is to go through the entire process of performing a radon test. And this includes loading an electret into its chamber. Even your shipping blanks should be loaded into whatever chamber type that you're using for the spiking test. Another good question that we get asked a lot is, what's the lowest voltage that my electrets can have for spiking? And the answer is short and straightforward. Electrets for the spiking service must have at least 300 volts. Furthermore, if you include any shipping blanks, those should have at least 200 volts. Next question, how can I easily track down previous spiking records in my database? In order to find all the completed spiking records that you've performed in the Radon Report Manager, launch the software and click on the Reports button from the main menu. This will cause a new window to open. Click on the Spiking Report option in the report list, and then select the specific record from the drop-down box in the right portion of the window. You can preview, print, and create PDFs of your spiking records from here. Note that this is only for tracking down completed spiking records. You are not able to load the record for editing purposes from this reports window. And amazingly, we appear to have reached the end of this video, which was much longer than I had intended it to be. If you can think of any frequently asked questions that I've forgotten to add, give us a call at the office and let me know. Thanks for watching.